Okay, so welcome to uh, this uh, first video blog post. My name is Jeremy Anglum, and uh, I thought today I would go through an example of using R. I've got uh, a post that I did uh, several months back, which was looking at Winter Olympic medals data, so I thought uh, that would be a good example. If you want to have a copy of the code uh, to run through yourself at some point, uh, it's available. Just go to jeremyanglenbookspot.com and um, look for uh, analysis of winter medical, uh, Olympic medal data. Okay, so the aim of this post uh, is to uh, show you in a video uh, terms what it means to interact with R and specifically I'll be demonstrating the use of Eclipse and Stat ET to interact with R and I also thought it might be useful to uh, uh, for some people to have a, a sense of how one might speak code uh, it's one thing to read code but uh, it's interesting to think about how we translate those things into words uh, for some that's intuitive for others it might be uh, of use okay so let's get started what you're seeing here is uh, a very minimized, uh, low-resolution version of StatET uh, and the um, Eclipse environment. Up the top we have the script editor. At the bottom I've uh, loaded the console. I'll just clear the, the console. And uh, what I'm going to be doing is running through some existing code uh, and showing how uh, you can do that while also interacting with the console to answer some interesting questions about some data. So the first line here uh, in my script uh, has a uh, URL and uh, it's in, in, in uh, quotation marks and it says HTTP spreadsheet and so forth. So I'm going to assign that uh, character uh, string to a variable called Google Link. One of the nice things about R is that you can pull data directly from the internet. So I'm going to assign uh, the uh, data that's at that location uh, to uh, a variable called medals. So I'm using the read.csv function and then I'm taking that URL and uh, that, that, that file with common separated values and I'm choosing not to convert uh, string variables to factors. So if I click Control R, Control R, that will send that data to um, the console, or send the command to the console and allow me to um, view the data. And so yeah, by typing metals into the console I can see that yes, there is data there. This line save plot, uh, which I've assigned to true, um, is uh, saying that uh, it's a basically a logical variable which I'll be using in future conditional statements to uh, decide whether I want to print my plots or just save them uh, to some uh, external file. So what have we got here? Uh, well these first couple of lines are necessary for me because when I had a look at the import of the metals data I can ask for the the head of the metals data, either the first rows of the data frame, and everything looks good. We've got the year of the medal, uh, the city which the medal was won in, the sport, the discipline, uh, the uh, country that won the event, and whether it was gold, silver, medal, uh, gold, silver, bronze, uh, the gender of uh, the winner, and so forth. But if I look at the last through a uh, few rows of the medals data frame, we can see that there's actually a couple of rows that are not meant to be here. They're just uh, rows indicating the source of the data. So a trick I had here was to convert uh, the year variable, this one, to numeric. And it's saying that some NA values are being introduced by coercion. And so what that's saying is that these last two rows are now NA because they don't have a valid year. So now I'm going to remove those rows by saying if the row is not A, retain it. So now if I look at tails, tail, metals, get a bit excited sometimes. 
we can see that yes, those rows have been removed. Okay, if I want to have a quick look at the data, there's various ways I can do that in R. One way, considering that they are largely uh, categorical variables, or at least variables with a set of categories, is to look at the frequencies of those categories. And likewise, there are many ways uh, to do that, but one way I'm doing it is to um, run a table on each of those variables, uh, sort that table by decreasing frequency, and turn it into a column so it's nice and easy to read. So this S apply function is taking the metals data frame, and for each variable in the metals data frame, it is running this function. So can RR that, and it prints out a whole pile of information, which perhaps we can get a slightly better sense. Lots of darts, of, lots of put. But perhaps if we clear the console, rerun it, we can see, okay, number of uh, males rather than number of females, which is going to be missed. Uh, we get the most frequently awarded medal is for an individual event. Uh, the greatest winner is Norway, then USA, then the USSR, and so forth. Okay. So now we see um, a line of code where we're assigning to a variable called metals by year uh, an aggregate which is applying a function to a variable for each uh, element of uh, an index. So in this case, uh, each year is going to have its own length, and so that's to say the number of elements uh, here. So this is hopefully going to answer the question, how many medals have been awarded in each Olympics? And so we could have a look at this. I can highlight this and click Control R, Control R, and that will print out that that um, well, presumably it's a data frame that I've just created and we can check that by typing class metals by year and see yes it is a data frame or we can ask for the structure of that metals by year and we see well yes it's a data frame with 20 observations and two variables with a number of numeric years and uh, integer I guess the counts of number of metals awarded in that particular Olympic year so it's often nice to see a plot of this. Um, and so what I'm doing here is uh, I thought I'd plot the count of medals by the year to see whether, say, the number of medals won each year has increased. So there's a number of things going on in this function. Um, perhaps I start simple. If I just take this first core part, press it into the console, I can plot the most basic stuff. And what we see here is we have year on the x-axis, count of medals on the y-axis, and the values as dots in the plot, showing clearly that over time the number of medals awarded has increased uh, and it's somewhat flat up until what is it, 84, and then it's sort of a quite an acceleration to modern days. Now. There's a lot more going on in this lab, this um, this plot, and I guess this is one of the nice features of the, the plot. If you want to get something basic to get a sense of what's going on in your data, there's a very quick command where you type in a formula, uh, 